Hey guys, welcome to my overclocking guide for the AMD RX 480. I already posted a small video um, today in the morning and uh, yeah, a lot of people didn't like what I said. Well, it's just a comment, not really a test, right? But still, from my point of view as an overclocker, it's kind of uh, a little bit disappointing. Same goes for the overclocking. So, um, I have an MSI RX 480 here. It's the same card like all the other cards. It's just reference design. All cards have the same cooler, uh, just a different uh, sticker eventually. And the card has a stock clock of 1266 megahertz. And I tested five cards so far and they all seem to be kind of the same um, overclocking wise. So you can gain up to 100 megahertz with overclocking, which is not really impressive if you consider the stock clock of 1266 megahertz. It's an increase of around 5%. And if you transfer that to the increasement you get in the FPS, it's not really much. Because it doesn't scale linear, so probably with 5% overclock you maybe can get 4% uh, performance increase. So if you have 60 FPS in a game, you can get like 3%, uh, 3 FPS more, which is obviously not really much, not really worth it. Still, uh, we will take a look at how to do this, how to overclock the card. I have to point out that AMD did a really nice job on the driver because you can overclock the card directly in the driver. You don't need an extra software. So you can access everything from memory clock, GPU clock, um, fan speed, uh, power target, and also the voltage, which is really nice. I wish Nvidia would do that. Um, okay, so let's go to Windows and check how we can overclock this card. As you can see, I already set up my test platform and this time I'm using Broadville E. Uh, so it's a Core i7-6950X, uh, which is running at four gigahertz overclocked, 10 core, 20 threads on the Rampage 5 Edition 10 and I'm using 32 gigabyte of memory running in quad channel at 3000 megahertz. So this should be a very powerful platform just to make sure that nothing holds back or limits the GPU performance. So on the left side in the GPU C you can see the details again of the RX 480. Uh, you can also see that I'm using the 8 gigabyte version and you can see the stock GPU clock of 1266 megahertz and the memory is running at 2000 megahertz which is also stock. So before we start with overclocking, we take a look at the stock run I did before with the fire strike. So you can see uh, the fire strike score is around 10,800, the total score. And this is kind of similar to the run I did with the 6,700K at 4.5 gigahertz, which kind of means that only the GPU is limiting the performance and not the CPU. So the more interesting thing probably is the graphics score, which is around uh, 12K and the GT1 is 55 FPS almost and the GT2 is 50 FPS. So just keep those numbers in mind and we will do the overclocking now and then run Firestrike again to see how much gain we can get in typical 3D applications. So to do the overclocking first uh, go to AMD Radeon settings like right click desktop, go to gaming, global settings and open the global Wattman. If you open this the first time you will get some kind of notification that you will lose your warranty if you do this. Uh, ob obviously, because this is software OC, you can completely ignore and accept this uh, error message, let's say, notification, because there is no way you can track OC done by software. So just do whatever you want, you will not lose your uh, warranty in um, uh, yeah real world. So this is the global Wattman. It's a really nice feature and I love that AMD put this into the driver. I wish Nvidia would be that open for overclocking. So you can see the temperature and power target control here, fan speed control, GPU control, this means GPU voltage and GPU clocks and memory control. So first of all, we will start with the, T, uh, CPU, uh, the GPU temperature and power target. So switch this one to manual and you can see it's kind of high with a max temp of um, 85 and 80. So we will lower this one to 85 and keep target at 80, which should be a little bit better. Um, the thing is the stock cooler is actually really bad, so there's not much headroom left. So um, the problem is even if you lower this, I will show it later, you will just get a shitload of uh, down and up clocking. Um, so yeah, even if you put this one to 70 or 60, it's not really helping the OC, so you can just keep this at 85 or 80, so the cooler is not spinning up at 5000 RPM all the time. Increase the power, that, uh, power limit to 50% just to make sure this is not holding back um, the OC. I saw some discussions already on the German video about 6-pin versus 8-pin and power limits and stuff. 
the thing is the six pin connector in theory um, can s supply over 200 watts so um, just ignore some kind of um, ATX specs or PCI specs of course um, you cannot deliver that much by spec but in real world you can deliver like 200 or 250 watt easily by just a six pin connector so this is not holding you back and you can increase the power limit that's totally fine so now we will do the fan setting the problem is as I said before the fan is pretty bad um, the stock cooler so just put this one to maximum otherwise you will not have any chance for a good OC because the temperatures will be at 80 degree within a minute Memory OC is pretty nice because you can just push this one to the maximum. Uh, I tested five cards so far and all, five out of five cards did uh, 2250 MHz all the time. So you just can keep this at 2250, I'm pretty sure it should work. About the voltage, we cannot change the voltage of the memory, so you, you can just leave this on auto or manual, doesn't really matter. So now we will do the GPU overclocking. Check this one, also check this one. Now you can see the different power states from 0 to 7. 0 is like idle performance and 7 is the maximum 3D performance. And you can see clocks which are aligned to voltages. So what we want is to have the maximum clock for the longest time possible, right? So what we do is uh, we set this one to 1330. Uh, five, like, I tested the five cards, right, and um, the overclocking was between 1320 one th uh, and 1360. So I guess this is kind of what you can s expect from the stock cooler. So we will start with 1330 first, which should work on most of the cards then, I guess. Just set 1330 on all of uh, these three. And make sure you adjust the, uh, the voltage control to 1150 on all three. The problem is we cannot really go higher but it wouldn't help probably because the cooler is not good enough. So you can also try to put 1.3 something here. You can see it's going back to 1.150. So that's the maximum we can do. Now apply the settings. And now we can uh, go to GPU-C and check what we did. So you can see uh, GPU clock is applied, also memory clock is applied. If we go to sensor now, you can see the card is still running at uh, save volt and save uh, clocks in idle, which is what we want, right? We want to save power uh, on idle. So what we do now is go back to graphics card and then we go to this question mark and start the rendering test. This is some very light 3D load. So what you can see now is that the temperature is increasing. Uh, the, we set the, the target to, 85, uh, to 80 and the maximum to 85. So once the GPU temperature hits 85 degree, it will downclock the GPU. The problem is that the cooler is so weak and so slow that it will start downclocking and uh, it will take uh, quite a while until the fan keeps spinning up. You can see it's only 1100 RPM now, so it's not spinning up fast enough. So th this will cause downclocking in a bit and once the cooler is catching up to remove the heat, then it will keep this, the clock stable on load. You will see that in a second. So I guess today in my room is a little bit colder than yesterday when I did a German video. When I did the German video, the, um, the clock dropped down to like 1200 megahertz, 1100 megahertz. So depending probably on your room temperature or the temperature inside your case, uh, the clock will drop more or not. You can see it, it changed a little bit here, only 20 um, megahertz, which is not that bad. So I guess this should be fine for now. Okay, so we will do the 3D mark now. I know that you will complain again that it's only a synthetic benchmark and all that. The thing is, I kind of agree. Of course, it's a, a 3D benchmark. Still, keep in mind that every, every game you have is in the end just a 3D application, right? So every game scales different with a driver, scales different with different GPUs. So in the end, this is just like a normal game. You can, you can just compare FPS here like in every other game. Well, I think you can hear it in the background now that the card is getting really, really loud now. It's probably already at like 3000, 4000 4, RPM. That's what I mentioned before. This card is actually not made for OC. So um, the stock cooler cannot really get rid of the heat of the card, so it will spin up to like 5000 RPM on load, even if you just overclock by 60 MHz.
So we just left the benchmark. Uh, let's take a look at GPU-C quickly to see what happened. And this is GT2 benchmark. You can see the clock was always stable at 1330 MHz. You can see this is a physics test where the GPU power was not needed, so it clocked down. And it's the same again in the combined test, so the car was stable at the given clocks. You can also see that even with the like 5000 RPMs, the car hit 80 degrees, so this, the cooler is just not sufficient at all. You can see it's running almost 100%, so this is 5000 RPM. Okay, so uh, let's compare the score quickly. Again, uh, if you remember the score earlier, it was uh, around 55 FPS here and around 50 FPS here. So it's an increase of around 6, 7, um, 8 FPS, which is almost like 10%, a little bit over 10%. You can also see the graphics score improved from 11,900 to 13,700. So of course, by overclocking just a little bit in the clocks, you can gain quite a lot of um, uh, performance percentage wise so by overclocking the GPU by 5% and the, me and the memory by 250 um, uh, megahertz you can gain in to a total performance of 10% uh, the problem is you cannot do that with a stock cooler on a 24 system so either you get a proper uh, air cooler or you mount a water block but I'm pretty sure if you mo mount a 100 euro water block on this card it's kind of not worth it anymore. So I would suggest that you wait for the custom cards like a uh, Asus Strix card. All right, I hope I helped you a little bit uh, with this video so you could get some more insights about the RX 480. If you have questions about the card, more technical details or whatever, please put it in the comments. Uh, I will try my best to answer it in the next Q&A video. All right, so have a nice uh, evening and see you soon.